something owners have been advocating for years. Gone is the Keating Doctrine, forcing proprietors to be princes of print or queens of the screen, but not both. And analogue television will be switched off later than originally planned. It will be phased out between 2010 and 2012. In the meantime, we're to be subjected to a government action plan to seduce us on the virtues of digital. In a moment, I'll be speaking with Helen Coonan, but first, this report from Ros Childs. Good evening, and welcome to television. In just 50 years, it's gone from black and white and simple to wildly complex. Digital television, the ultimate viewing experience. The Australian media scene is now a dizzying array of platforms and technology, devices and delivery systems. Consider this as one example. It's called Crank TV, billed as Australia's first television channel on the internet, and it was launched just a few weeks ago. A new player in a multimedia jungle. Radiation on television, the drug of the nation, really radiation. But for all the breakneck changes in the way we get our information or enjoy our entertainment, the dominant players haven't changed all that much. Australia's cross-media laws and restrictions limiting the level of foreign ownership of traditional media has served to maintain an uneasy status quo. The big three media players, PBL News and Fairfax, have eyed each other off but couldn't do much more. So they've tried to protect their traditional old media with forays into the new. Clearly the time for action to meet the challenges of digital is now. The current cross-media laws increasingly risk inhibiting the growth of new services, limiting media companies from obtaining economies of scale and scope, constraining them in addressing the kind of challenges I've talked about posed by emerging media forms. And Federal Communications Minister Helen Coonan today right unshackles the giants. Cross-media restrictions will go. Foreign ownership is on. The rules are changing because the game is very different. But what I think is certain is that some players are going to become considerably larger by buying up more existing assets. I don't think that's going to do a great deal to encourage anyone to do more which is new. I think they've gone about as far as they could get away with them today. That, you know, and they go a fair way. You know, when you consider that cross-media ownership is it's largely now broken down, under the new rules, a single media company could own a TV station, a radio station and a newspaper all in the one market. But each capital city must have five different media owners. Regional markets must have four. Rules to preserve diversity, one of the government's mantras as it canvassed opinions for the media changes. Stephen Conroy, the opposition's communications spokesman, is doubtful. What we're going to see is a massive handing of concentration of media ownership to the most powerful people in the land already. This has got to be considered to be bad for democracy, bad for diversity of opinion, and should be opposed, and Labor will be opposing it. If you haven't seen a, um, a proper digital signal on a good quality TV, then, you know, you don't know you're alive. Laurie Webb is defying the digital trend. He's a convert to the technology and now onto his second digital set-top box. In TV land, he's a rarity. Just 15% of Australian households have gone digital in a take-up viewed as lacklustre. We now can't wait to get the washing up done and get in here to watch this TV in, in comfort and with uh, absolutely awesome picture. This is news, how you want it, when you want it. The nation's full move to digital was due in 2008. That's unrealistic. The deadline has now been deferred another two to four years. And Helen Coonan hasn't ruled out distributing free digital set-top boxes to get people on board and the numbers up to critical mass. Only then will commercial broadcasters be allowed to look at offering more than one digital channel, multi-channeling. I think it's uh, a very surprisingly cautious or disappointingly cautious approach uh, to uh, an important opportunity that we've got to think a bit about uh, a new media landscape. 
Jock Given is a lecturer and an author on media issues at the University of Melbourne. Perhaps one of the most striking things about the overall package is that we see a lot of rhetoric in the ownership rules about new possibilities opening up, new investors coming into the industry, being able to do new kinds of things. And yet when we turn over the page and we get to the stuff about digital TV, we find the government still wanting to micromanage a highly uncertain technology. While national broadcasters, the ABC and SBS, will be allowed to offer more variety on their digital channels, the decision to keep commercial free-to-air broadcasters away from multi-channeling keeps at least two of the big three free-to-air players happy and keeps competition away from pay TV operators. So free-to-air commercial broadcasters will have enough time to get their houses in order. Now, that three-year gap enables the existing big boys to get themselves set for the channel deregulation, which is essentially what we're talking about, to occur from 2010. So while these changes won't be obvious overnight, they are set to shake up the whole media landscape. Will, it, will there be bigger media companies who have who've diversified further in ownership? Yes. Will there be more foreign players in the Australian market? We think so. Um, will the rules be tested? Um, we think so. Um, will the public be satisfied with the array of opportunities and choices in front of them? Yes, we think so. Will everybody be happy? No. Ross Charles with that report. The National Broadcaster didn't write a big mention in the Coonan discussion paper today, but coincidentally, the government's apparently negative view of the ABC featured as a cover story in this week's bulletin. The bulletin says there's a determination within the government to use the appointment of a new managing director and a new chairman to finish the job of changing the ABC's culture more to the government's liking. I spoke with Senator Coonan about the ABC and her new media policies in Sydney this afternoon. Helen Coonan, you've obviously thought about this for quite some time, so you must have a fairly clear idea uh, of what might be in your digital action plan to persuade Australians to go digital faster than they have. So what practical incentives are you considering for consumers? That's still really to be worked out. We need to develop a digital action plan, but the thinking is advanced that we need to look at, first of all, giving consumers some information and education. We know that the take up of digital has been a bit sluggish. So we need to, I think, encourage people to know that uh, we will get to switching off their analogue signal and we have to move to digital because everyone else in the world is going that way. So we need to educate them as to the benefits. And once we get to a certain penetration, then I think we have to look at who simply can't afford a set-top box and who are the recalcitrants who need to be brought over. One very big element of, uh, of this discussion paper, of course, relates to media ownership. Yes. How will your ownership rules promote greater diversity of ownership within Australia if they also allow the current big players to get bigger and the mainstream market more concentrated in fewer hands? I think that's a really very fair question and what of course I think we have to understand is that we're not prohibiting of course with foreign investment the fact that there can be new players or indeed in existing in Australia other players who want to enter the market. Uh, I don't think we can assume for a minute that there will be further concentration and we but you can't assume not either, can you? No, but what we can say is that we're very serious about having a floor under which uh, diversity can't go any lower. In other words, the number of players can't get any lower. And secondly, we want to do it along with new services, which will obviously be a much richer experience for consumers. And can I say also that it's a slightly different landscape to the last time we looked at this, Kerry, because we know now that there really is a, pro a proliferation of uh, news and media and diversity from other sources. But th those tend to be on the fringe, don't they? They do. Well, I think uh, they have been, but they're not really anymore when you've got uh, independent news wires, you've, you can go on the net and you can read editorials from anywhere around the world, in effect. And you've got, of course, web blogging. You've got lots of other ways in which people are getting news and information. But when you're talking about the concentration of power that can come with a concentration of media ownership, 
Rupert Murdoch, for instance, already controls nearly 70% of all Australian newspapers, plus a slab of pay TV. How does it promote media diversity to allow Mr Murdoch to buy up a television station and or radio stations and make more substantial inroads into new media on top of what he already owns? Well, it may not, Kerry, and of course we've got the competition regulator there to ensure that there is no substantial lessening of competition in a market. And if you already control uh, the outlets that you've just enumerated, I think it would be highly unlikely that you would be able to make any further acquisition of the regulated platforms. But, you're, but what you have now in Sydney, for instance, mm -hmm. is I think 12 media groups. Mm -hmm. In Melbourne, I think it's around 11. Mm -hmm. What you're saying under your policy mm. is that that will be allowed to shrink to five mm. in each capital Well, city. subject to, the, to both regulators, subject to the diversity test and subject to the ACCC, who is charged to ensure that there is not a substantial lessening of competition in any market. And the regulator has made a number of statements to say that with the growth of the internet and with the growth of news being delivered on other platforms that could well become relevant to looking at whether or not these will be permitted. You must be aware of what's already happened with regional radio once providing important local programming and, and local services now dominated by an increasing trend to national networks with tiny handfuls of hubs churning out generic programs. Won't your new ownership rules simply shrink regional m media diversity even further in many places? It won't, Kerry, because uh, to start with, there are very few media uh, outlets in regional and rural Australia that uh, are over the threshold. So in other words, if they're under four players in any market, it's not going to allow any consolidation at all. So the horse has bolted in those places is what you're saying? No, what I'm saying is that there has to be, I think, some movement of scale and scope. And for instance, sometimes we can find that in regional markets, you can have a television outlet and a newspaper going broke. If you're going to stop any kind of consolidation at all, you're going to actually diminish services for consumers in those markets. But your point is a good one, and we're going to make sure that we legislate as part of licence conditions, that news must have be live and local, and where there is any undue concentration, the regulator will have the capacity, say with radio, to be able to issue another licence in that area. Now, on the future of the ABC, Senator, I notice... I love this, that topic. <laughs> I notice in this week's Bulletin magazine, you've acknowledged that local drama production on the ABC is unacceptably low. Yes. You say, quote, we've obviously taken a very close look at this and we need to do something about yes. it. What can you do to raise the level of local production, quality local produ production particularly, other than to increase funding for that purpose? Well, it, there's two points to it. I think you do need to have some extra funding but along the lines of an independent production arm, you can not only assist the ABC with co-productions, but you can also help the local production sector. I think there's some innovative ways in which we can look at getting local content up. I think it is a critically important role uh, for the ABC, and I'm very saddened to see that uh, largely due to external costs, uh, rather than just reallocating uh, priorities, the ABC has let its uh, local content production slip. I think we can do something about it and I think we should. The government has the report that uh, you commissioned mm. from KPMG yes. uh, after its review of the ABC's mm. efficiency and funding and I understand that it actually says the ABC is both efficient and chronically underfunded, is that correct? Well, before we get too excited about that, we have to understand that it was a very macro level report, although it does say that to the extent that it looked at the macro level of asset allocation and things of that nature, that the ABC was broadly efficient. It certainly said that. Uh, I think we have to look at what the report recommends, look at what the ABC has asked for as part of its triennium funding. It's not always the same figures and come up with something that properly funds the ABC in accordance with our election commitment. And finally, Senator, is it true, as the bulletin is reporting, that ABC Chairman Donald MacDonald is, quote, hated and detested, unquote, within coalition ranks, including within the Cabinet, where he has no supporters except John Howard, and does that mean he's not going to get a third term as Chairman? I think that uh, that's a very unfair characterisation of the attitude to the Chairman uh, amongst my colleagues, including my cabinet colleagues, I don't think that that fairly characterises the attitude to Donald. Uh, what we do, do you though, think he's done a good job? Well, I think he's often done a very good job in difficult circumstances with the ABC. We all know the history of uh, some of the changes uh, 
of uh, management, and obviously it was pretty hard to keep the ship on the, on the, uh, on the seas and upright during those kind of problems. I think we have to understand that, uh, that Donald's had two terms. Uh, if he were not renewed, it would be because he'd had two terms and not because that was a correct characterisation of his time on the ABC. Helen Kernan, thanks very much thanks, for talking Gary. with us.